Hello viewers, you are watching Talk to Obian Show. This is our weekly program. I am your host, Adi Sasefa. My guest today is Dr. Gamedo Dali, an associate professor and member of parliament, as well as uh, a vegetation ecologist and biodiversity management expert. Doctor, I am really thrilled to have you here. Uh, thank you. Good. Uh, could you tell us a bit about your background, your profile? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm a son of a father from rural area, educated uh, in, in uh, Arsenegal uh, uh, district from uh, elementary to high school and finished my first degree in Adsava University, uh, science faculty Arakilo. My master's in the same uh, university in botanical sciences and my PhD from Georg August University of Göttingen, Germany. And, uh, as to my work experience, I have been, I, I, I have been teaching at different levels, uh, including from uh, high school to first degree masters and PhD students, different courses, mainly botany, vegetation ecology, general ecology and biodiversity management, and the rangeland, management, rangeland ecology management. Uh, and um, work experience, I, have, I had served as head of district or Warada education office for three years, then served as head of forest department in the Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute, uh, head of uh, or director of uh, access beneficiaring or genetic resource transfer and regulation department in the Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute and director general of the Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute for uh, five years then promoted to ministerial position and served as minister for environment forest and the climate change of the Fer Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia these are the brief summaries Okay, you're also a member of parliament, right? Yes. I, how, how did you become a, par a member of parliament? Uh, my understanding on this issue is uh, I was um, living at the, in the Kotobe area uh, where in, in, the, in the place called um, uh, Ankocha, where many people have no access to uh, transport, means of transportation. And when, when I'm coming to office or um, I'm going to office or uh, coming back to my home, I always serve the local community. That, that is how I start interaction with the, local, the, the surrounding communities. And that triggered the community members to elect me for, for the Adsawa parliament position, the, the, the zonal or Yeka position, which is, which is what they call uh, the, the ye, ye zonu ye mikrobetawa. And that, that gave me again the opportunity to have some wider uh, participation in the political program to, to just uh, tell you I was not member of the parliament, I mean, member of any party by then. And when this was after the Ethiopian, according to Ethiopian calendar, 1997 failed election in Addis. And during that Mamoya, Mamoya Mirza, I was elected for, for that position. And uh, this last round, I was asked by the district head they can nominate me for, for the federal parliament. And for, we, have, we have to debate on that, I have to tell them that I'm, I'm not that much active on this and that. Finally, I was convinced and my name was transferred to the uh, EPRDF head office in Addis. And that, that is how it happened. And my, my understanding is still no, I could be wrong as my active participation in the community affairs where I live and the, the unconditional service I was giving to them. For example, when somebody fell ill at midnight, 
I will be there. I will. I, I, I take them to hospital. I stay with them in the hospital overnight. Yeah. When a sudden accident happens, I do remember once there was a marriage ceremonial uh, game playing with horse. When one horse jumped on on uh, stepped on a small girl on her head, I have to take her to to emergency room from one hospital to another, which which was kind of. Yeah. Unconditional service and which initiated the, the, the close attachment with the local community. That, that is how I, I, I perceive my coming to power okay. of, You're which means uh, to put it in a, in a play language, my coming to that, do, those, uh, I mean, as to, to parliament position. You. Uh, you became member of parliament with no affiliation to any race, tribe, stuff like that? Not that, even with the political party. Yeah, the, just the uh, when I was nominated, uh, the, the original initiation was my, my participation in the community service. But when, when that nomination goes to the final decision line following the established channel, I, I belong to the OPDO by then and ODP later on, party, and I have to join them that willingly. You're still a member of the parliament, right? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, how is your experience in parliament? Because I need you to tell me in a very comparative approach. You have yep. been a member of parliament uh, during Haile uh, Mariam time and uh, Prime Minister Abiy and Malla Zainab as well, right? Isn't it? Uh, Partially. Partially. Partial. Anyway, yeah. can, you, can, you, can you put it in a very comparative way? Uh, I think if you don't know how parliament performance in the previous time versus now, the comparison would not be that much visible for somebody from outside. For me, I had the opportunity to be in the parliament and in those two, at least I have very clear uh, understanding and participation in those two times. Um, any issue, and also I, I, um, uh, I had served as member of council of ministers. Anything that would pass to the parliament should first addressed by the council of ministers. And you discuss issues in the council of ministers, and then they pass to to uh, the parliament. Whether you agree to them or not during the council meeting, one decision is taken and if the same agenda item comes to the parliament as following the democratic system, as you have already approved in the council or as that issue has been uh, decided in the parliament, I mean in the council of ministers, when it comes to parliament, your role will be to support what has been decided. In the, in the Council of Ministers. That is a democratic uh, way of uh, handling issues. But coming back to your question, in the previous time, any issue to be discussed, be it at mem members of council level or parliament level, were handled through the party line and through the party platform, which is called um, CEL, or, or uh, uh, what have you, but the party platform. And if you have questions, suggestions, or any, anything on, on a certain agenda item, you have to do that during the party discussion, uh, the, in the presence of members of the party. And then the coming of issues to the parliament is more of procedural. But with the coming, with this change, you s really see the difference. Because the difference now is you can raise any issue in any way you like, with any tone you want to use, and still you are free as per the constitution. Because in the constitution, it has been uh, clearly stated that Members of the parliament are accountable to their constituency and their mind. Yeah. You, you read your mind and you talk your mind. 
that that practice that exercise is now there i'm one of the lucky members of parliament who have been exercising this freedom i i, I for, for example for the last two years i support what i want to support or i could support i bluntly i clearly oppose say it without any limitation without using any fear. without any fear using all possible terms but, but had it been, been in the previous, previous time? time no you would be no for example i have been challenging even the prime minister putting strong words using strong words and putting some challenging uh, notions scenarios and others including the uh, uh, members of the parliament and so on but there is no as such threat i got from anybody which is which is a clear indication that it, it is it is really we are in the process of practicing the democratic um, way of debating in the parliament and finally decision should be made with the majority rule principle with the majority vote principle or with consensus that, that that's normal but what i would say is still remaining is the way of decision making is still more of party nature which, which means majority will always support whatever is presented to them uh, you are a vegetation ecologist and a biodiversity management expert right what that science deals about um, it is about living in harmony with nature we have to we have to conserve our environment, we have to conserve our biodiversity because we depend on our natural resources. Exactly. Not only developing countries, developed countries are entirely dependent on, on natural resources. When it comes to developing countries like Ethiopia, majority of our population are still, more than 70%, still directly dependent on our natural resources, like the greenery we are sitting in. Uh, beyond the, the scenery, the beauty, and beyond the, the clean oxygen we get from, from uh, this uh, safely, sustainably managed ecosystems, we, have, we need water, we need fertile soils, we need a uh, functional ecosystem to prevent pathogens, disease-causing organisms. All those are possible and available in a healthy and um, well-managed ecosystem and, and the, the, perp the uh, if efforts of biodiversity management is to not protect biodiversity, to manage it, to conserve it and at the same time use it in a sustainable way. Which means we have to use it now and the next generation should be able to use the existing natural resources and improve if possible for the other generation. So ecology is about interaction. We interact with our surrounding, be it uh, abiotic or non-living or biotic living organism, uh, I mean a living environment. That interaction, th that science is about that interaction. And if that interaction is not healthy in, 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 um, in a way that improves the environmental situation and improves the livelihood of the people, it needs to be fixed and that is where ecological concepts and the principles come in. Biodiversity is our food, biodiversity is our medicine, biodiversity is our shelter, take everything we need to live on, including the hard currency, the export commodities, all are from biodiversity. So managing them and using them in a sustainable way is what the science of biodiversity management tells us. Thank you. Uh, Ethiopia has a broken world record by planting 4 billion tree seedlings over a single rainy season yep. last year. Yep. The same initiation is being undertaken as a second phase this year as well, yep. to plant 5 billion seedlings in a single uh, summer season this yep. time. How do you uh, see the initiation that being launched by Dr. Abiy Ahmed? Uh, I see it as an excellent initiative an excellent initiative that is an example for, for the world community. 
No prime minister in the history of this country has managed such large scale world record planting of three seedlings. This is excellent in all terms. This is super in all terms. Uh, the, the issue of tree planting is not for simply reporting about, about uh, planting. We have been planting different seedlings for many years, particularly starting from the Ethiopian millennium. Every season, every rainy season, every planting season, we report millions have been planted, millions have been planted here and there, and so many false reports were coming. The current initiative led by Prime Minister Abi is to map it, to, to, to identify locations of those planting and use technology to trace them back. And in all events, he start talking about tree planting. He is more of high level um, uh, leader. I, I mean, as he is a top leader of the country, and his, his understanding in the linking to, say, for example, uh, availability of water, sustainability of our existence, and, and making it source of economy using tourism. All those, like the Adsava projects for increasing uh, uh, tourist attractions. Those are very, very uh, exemplary uh, achievements or successes. And those has, have been undertaken not only at certain level for a certain period of time, but in all regions, in all districts, and all regional governments, all mayors in, in, in different cities have owned it. So what matters is the issue of ownership. What matters is the issue of leadership. He managed in that, he gave clear guidance, and not only giving guidance, he managed to put national committee in place where all line ministries have been given a quota. And not only one of our previous failures were we plant and nobody cares about this establishment, it is management, it is, is follow-up. But what he did was he, he clearly guided the line ministries not only to plant but also to follow-up, which is again very good initiative. My uh, reservation or my concern, not reservation, I would put it this way. My concern is those excellent initiatives being taken, those excellent leadership uh, styles being practiced in different regions, not only at federal level, but under his leadership in the regions, needs to be sustainable. To be sustainable, it has to be systemic. To, to be systemic, institutions need to be put in place. We have strategy, we have initiatives, we have excellent results, but those need to be institutionalized and being managed to the grassroots level. I have concern, I have reservation that institutions are rightly placed and functioning to sustain those initiatives. Otherwise, his leadership Owning the issue is super, and I, I would say he is leading the country by example as far as the green legacy of Ethiopia is concerned. Okay, uh, by comparing with that of the last year, this year's uh, tree selling campaign is uh, by far better than that of the last year. Yes. Actually, you learn uh, by doing, right? Yes. You learn new things when you do it. Mm -hmm. In that sense, this year's campaign is quite different from that of the previous yeah. one. Uh, when it comes to this year, most, most of them should give at least fruit. Mm -hmm. Like, they ought to be edible. Mm -hmm. uh, another form, it ought to maintain the aesthetic beauty of the environment yeah. as well. And they also inculcated uh, job opportunity mm -hmm. in this, in this uh, initiative. The, I mean, the users in a team plant the nursery of the tree seedling and sell for 
uh, concerning bodies, yeah. right? Yeah. How do you see this, I mean, uh, the difference between the last year's campaign with this year? Uh, I think the overall appreciation is in regard to the planting and the ownership of the issue. But if you plant a coffee and talk about forest cover improvement, that is conceptually wrong. If you plant mango tree and you say you are covering, uh, improving forest cover, that is wrong. Why? Because coffee is a cash crop. It is agricultural crop. You plant, you manage, you harvest your product. The purpose is not for, for the sake of uh, improving the forest cover of the Ethiopia, but increasing the productivity of the country. Same is true with other fruit trees. I have no objection with the idea of mixing or integrating fruit, fruit trees, edible trees, with the other wild species. But my, my worry is, I mean, there is no rocket science in the planting of tree seedlings. The, the problem was experts were not given and proper institutions were not given attention to lead the process. What, who was leading the process? The politicians. Yeah. I have no problem with the politicians. My, me, myself, as a politician, there is no, no uh, point here to, uh, to, to oppose the participation of the politicians. My, my opposition is we have natural resource uh, experts, forest experts, environment experts, we, we should have given them the opportunity to, to lead the process at all levels. Uh, and it doesn't matter how much would be allocated for forest, how much would be allocated for, for um, agroforestry or coffee or fruit trees, but we should identify where we should plant a given tree for what purpose. Which plant to plant, where to plant, and for what purpose. All those needs to be addressed, answered, before starting the plantation. Uh, campaigns have been promoting and, and increasing public participation. But those campaigns need to be, again, translated into systemic approach. So, although I do not oppose the planting of fruit trees, increasing uh, job opportunities, increasing productivity of agricultural um, outputs or products, being the aesthetic, aesthetic beauty of aesthetic, the environment, we should clearly understand where is the natural forest, where is the plantation forest, where is the cash crop areas, where is the fruit areas. Those needs to be managed by science and the science should guide the process. Having said that, the integration is what we need the most. The thinking of that integration, for example, if we are uh, revegetating or reforesting a given mountain, and instead of um, only planting uh, uh, forest wild species, including the edible ones, is what we want. But do we want that mountain to be forest land or to, to be uh, agricultural um, plot needs to be identified in the map. And so there is some mixtures which we need to refine it in the process, but as it stands now, I have strong support and strong uh, appreciation for, for the initiative being taken. Good. Uh, what has to be done uh, to nurture the planted trees? Uh, for, to nurture the planted trees, seedlings are like our kids. Nobody throw away a kid and wait to grow up properly. You need to follow, you need to, uh, to uh, monitor and clear the, um, the weeds and also if needed water them and keep them healthy. To do that there is issue of where it, it should be planted and who will be looking after them. I, I don't know 
if we have we have that system in place but my worry and why establishment of seedlings have been very low over years in many many rounds is because of the mismanagement or the less follow up of, of the planted seedlings Th that 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 is a question so what should be done we have to strictly follow it on the, the, the responsibility and put in place a system that would ensure accountability for individuals and institutions who did not properly manage the planted seedlings and not only the planted seedlings the existing natural forest because if you are uh, convinced that we have to get back our forest cover we have to also equally concern it for the existing ones it is on it doesn't make sense if you destroy the existing natural forest but declare that you are planting billions good doctor what the world should learn from uh from Ethiopia green legacy because yeah. global warming is hitting the world so badly the lesson Ethiopia has given to the world is developing countries can do what many do not believe that it is possible we have demonstrated that we can do this in a single day planting such high number of seedlings which none of the world community did so far so we can, we can do it and we, we managed to do it because the top leader of the country owned it. So one of the lessons we give to the world community is if the leadership owns the issues, it is much easier to translate into action and get successful results. One, owning uh, the, the issue and leading by example. The other lesson is many communities were giving us free of charge service and the public mobilization was easily managed in Ethiopian context. So close interaction with local communities, mobilizing them toward this certain goal was what we have witnessed over years. And this is again one lesson that we can mobilize our communities for development, for green legacy, and for other, other purposes in a positive context. This is one, another lesson. The other is, we are not responsible for the global warming. The global warming is because of the industrial, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions from industrialized world. Developing countries are disproportionately affected by the greenhouse gases, emission of greenhouse gases and global warming. Having said that, even though we are not responsible for that, we are not simply sitting and blaming others that they did wrong thing. We are saying, yes, we are not responsible, but we have a role to play. And that role Ethiopia has played not only in this green plant, uh, green uh, legacy or tree seedling planting, in the global political leadership, Ethiopia was one of the top leaders, uh, starting from the um, uh, Copenhagen to the adoption of Paris Agreement, and now in the implementation phase. We were active in the process and the leading by example. So this practical commitment from this developing country should inspire others to play their role, at least in the way Ethiopia has played, or in a better, because they are better off in terms of financial resources. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. It's a Thank pleasure you. to be with you. Thank you. Very Thank you. Much. Dear viewers, you have been watching Talk to Obian Show. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful time. Goodbye.